Today, we're going to be exploring the ideas of continuity and differentiation of functions. By the end of this video, you'll be able to identify a function that is continuous everywhere but differentiable nowhere, which would be an unlike any other function you've worked with in the past. Before we can go through any of that, though, we need to make sure you know what differentiation is. So differentiation, you're going to start by taking a, the secant line between two points on the function, and then move those points closer together. A secant line is just a line that connects two points. So we have a couple graphs that will help demonstrate that. We took the same function and three graph, x squared, and then we drew two secant lines and a tangent line. The tangent is when the two points are infinitesimally close to one another. So at first, you're examining the points x equals negative 1 and x equals 2. And what do you get? Well, the tangent is basically going to be the average slope between them. Similarly, when you get a little bit closer, x equals 0 and x equals 2, then you're going to have the average slope between the points 0 and 2. Finally, when you get x equals 2 and the other x is another point that is infinitesimally close to 2, the slope of the tangent line will then be the slope of the function at that one individual point. And that's differentiation. Another condition for differentiability is mathematically defined on the screen there, but what that essentially means is that you can put a non-zero lower bound on the difference between two slopes. So if you take a and b, for example, you'll notice that looks very similar to delta y over delta x, similarly c and d, and you're taking the, different, the absolute value of the difference between them. And then if you're saying that if that value, the difference of the two slopes, is less than any epsilon, where epsilon is any value greater than zero, then it should be differentiable. However, if you can put a non-zero lower bound, if you can say that the difference between the two points is actually a value greater than epsilon, where epsilon is any value greater than zero, then it is not differentiable. And we are going to use that condition for differentiability to examine functions that are continuous everywhere but differentiable nowhere. Now we're going to go through a few functions that have a point of non-differentiability, and using the, the condition of differentiability that we went over earlier, we're going to show you why they're non-differentiable. Let's look at the first function, which has a discontinuity. If we were to draw in the tangent lines before and after that discontinuity, you'll notice that both of the tangent lines, being lines, they have a slope. If we were to take the difference between the slopes of that tangent lines, which is basically the difference between of the slope of the function right before and right after the discontinuity, it will come out to be a positive number, a number greater than zero. Therefore, it does not follow the condition of differentiability, therefore it is non-differentiable. However, if we're looking at the, the second function, if we were to draw the tangent lines right before and right after the point of non-differentiability, it would kind of look like they really are going towards the same line, or just a vertical line. However, as it would turn out, one of these values will have a positive, one of the lines will have a positive slope while the other will have a negative slope. So if you were to take the difference between them, the difference between the slopes of the function right before and right after the, po the point of non-differentiability will come out to be a positive value. Therefore, it does not pass the condition of differentiability. Therefore, it is non-differentiable. The third one is arguably the worst. That's the absolute value function. If you were to draw in the tangent line right before and right after the point of non-differentiability, you're going to get two lines that clearly do not converge onto the same line. Therefore, the difference between the slopes will be a positive value. Therefore, it is non-differentiable. And that is the function that we're actually going to be focusing on for a little while. So now we're going to talk about the absolute value function. Now, notice the kink, the point of non-differentiability, which is at the point x equals 0. As we talked about in the previous slide, because the, ki the condition for differentiability a function with a kink is non-differentiable. But what if you were to take a function with another kink, and then add another kink, and then just keep on adding an infinite number of kinks? That's what we're going to be doing in this video, and we're going to show you how that will lead to a function which is continuous everywhere, but differentiable nowhere. You can actually define these functions mathematically. So we found a function where you can just keep on adding more kinks, more points of non-differentiability, until you have an infinite amount. And the function we found that you can do that is where you take the distance between x and the nearest integer divided by 2n, where n is just any integer. But what, what would that function actually look like? Obviously, because n can be any integer, you're going to have a lot of different iterations of the function. So the first, the first iteration, you know, g of 0, is going to look a lot like the absolute value function. You're going to have one point of non-differentiability, you're going to have one kink, and it's going to look like that, really. That We're only going to be graphing it from 0 to 1, by the way. 
Note that the max height of that is going to be one half. Similarly, G1, the second iteration, is going to look fairly similar to the first, except you're going to be doubling the number of kinks and the number of peaks, really, and you're going to be halving the maximum height of the function. Note that for every iteration of G of n, the max height of the function will be 1 over 2 to the n. And additionally, every time you take a new iteration, you will have double the number of peaks as you do the last one. We're going to start by adding up these iterations one at a time so that we can build the Blancmange curve piece by piece. All right, we're going to start with one iteration, though. Just g0 of x. That's all we've got, just one individual g of n. We haven't added anything to it. But now, now we're going to take you know, the values of g of 0, and we're actually going to add to it. We're going to add the second iteration, g of 1 which I'm actually going to draw in for you. It's going to look a little bit like that. And again, we're going to define that as f of 1. So if you can see how, you know, by adding this red bit, the values of that red bit to the values of that, you know, this original picture, we're going to actually get this trapezoid, which just pointing it out, this is actually non-differentiable at two points, right here and here. Then we're going to add another one. We're going to add the, the g of 2 to it. So we're going to get g0x, g1x, and then we're actually going to add a third one, g2 of x, which I'm not going to draw in here because of time. And then we're going to add that all up and we're going to get F2. So now we're going to add a couple more iterations to it so we can get a little bit closer to building the Blancmange curve one at a time. Again, the Blancmange curve, you're adding an infinite number of iterations, so while we're not going to be doing that, this should help you visualize it a little bit more. Again, I'm going to label this one now as F3 of X because, again, we will be adding G0, G1, G2, and G3 in order to get F of 3. I'm going to label this one F4, and this one F5. Again, notice how in every individual iteration of F, you're getting more and more kinks, more and more points of non-differentiability, more and more places that fail that condition of differentiability. That's going to be incredibly important for when we're adding an infinite number of these and getting a function that is differentiable nowhere. So now we have a picture of the Blancmange curve in its entirety. We have added up an infinite number of iterations of the individual g of n. Again, I'm just going to label this because this is actually only graphed from 0 to 1. So it is actually the Blancmange curve, the entirety of this, which again, infinite number of individual g's of n added together. That is a function that is continuous everywhere but differentiable nowhere. And now we're going to prove that to you. So now we're going to prove that the Blancmange curve is both continuous everywhere but non-differentiable everywhere too. So we're actually going to start by proving that the Blancmange curve converges because as it would turn out the easiest way to prove continuity is to prove convergence. So we're going to start with that. So in order to prove convergence, we're going to start by looking at any individual g of n function. As we talked about earlier, the max of any individual g of n function is going to be 1 over 2 to the n. There's actually a little bit of a mistake here. This should really be 0, and that should be 1. Because as we talked about earlier, the max being 1 over 2 to the n, the max of g0 is going to be 1 over 2, and the max of g1 is going to be 1 over 4, because those are both 1 over 2 to the n. But we're adding all the functions up. So what happens when you add 1 half and 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 sixteenth, and you're going on for an infinite number of those iterations? Well, any mathematician can tell you that that'll come out to 1. So because all of that is adding up to 1, the Blancmange curve is actually converging to a limit of less than or equal to 1. Therefore, it is converging. So that, now that we have proven continuity of the Blancmange curve, we want to prove non-differentiability. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to go back to that original condition of differentiability, which again is basically saying we can put a non-zero lower bound on the difference between the slopes of two points which are right next to each other. So we're actually going to do that with the contrapositive of the condition. Yeah. So, 
So what is a contrapositive, though? We have to go through that first. A contrapositive is basically saying, if we have a statement, if A is true, then B is true, then the contrapositive of that statement will be, if B is not true, then A is not true. Note that that statement and its contrapositive are logically equivalent to one another. So pretty much, we are saying that if there is a lower bound such that, you know, the, uh, the difference between the two slopes is less than a value of epsilon, for epsilon is any positive value, then f is non-differentiable. So it is logically the same thing, but it's a little bit simpler to use in a proof for non-differentiability. Now we're going to do the formal proof for non-differentiability for the Blanc-Mange curve. We're going to show that the Blanc-Mange curve is non-differentiable at x, where x is just any arbitrary point. So the first thing we need to do is consider k. k is just any positive integer. That's important, it's an integer, but any positive integer can be any one. So what we know is that for any point x, there is another integer value, m, so that this statement that I'm writing up here will be true. Then what you're going to do after that is you're going to define this as b1, you're going to define this one as b2, and then you're going to take the average of them and call that one b. That's the fundamental basis of the algebra for the proof, but going any more in depth is beyond the scope of this video. But we, what we can tell you is that there are three scenarios where n is greater than k, n equals k, or n is less than k. Regardless of the scenario, the contrapositive is untrue, therefore it is non-differentiable at x. Because x is just any arbitrary point, and you're going through it in all three scenarios, you can generalize that to say that the Blanc-Mange curve is non-differentiable at any x. Therefore, the Blanc-Mange curve is differentiable nowhere. So that was a kind of, you know, mathematically and technical intensive way of thinking about non-differentiability. So we're going to give a more informal proof, which is really, it's not, it's not an actual proof, but it'll help you think about it a little bit. So we have a couple iterations of f of n up here. You know, again, we're just adding one more g of n each time. And you'll notice that every time we add more g of n, we're getting more points of non-differentiability. So in f of 0, for example, we only have the one point of non-differentiability. Then in the next iteration we have 2, then we have 5, and then we keep on getting more and more. So every time we add another function, though, we're adding more points of non-differentiability. So what happens if you add an infinite number of functions, each containing more and more points of non-differentiability over a set interval? Because again, all of these functions are being graphed from 0 to 1. Well, eventually, you're going to get an infinite number of points which are non-differentiable. So therefore, if you have an infinite number of points which are non-differentiable between 0 and 1, then the function is non-differentiable between 0 and 1. So now that we've proven both the continuity and the non-differentiability of the Blanc-Mange curve, we're going to touch on why is that important? Why is that cool? Well, First of all, it's extremely counterintuitive because everyone already knows that if you have a graph with a function on it, with a discontinuity, then it's non-differentiable. So I can, I can just look at that and say because there's a discontinuity, I cannot differentiate it at that point. So we already have the statement if differentiable, then continuous, but it turns out that it is not a biconditional. If continuous, then differentiable, it turns out that this statement, which is very intuitive, is actually completely wrong, as evidenced by the non-differentiability but continuity of the Blanc-Mange curve. And now, we're going to tell you how this can be used in your daily life.